You guys didn't get to see the beginning of this, but basically this is 18 gauge square wire. I just took about a foot and a half. I made this swirl and came around, made this swirl and then loop and then loop going the other way. And then this is gonna be the top. I'm just having fun making some random pendants. And so now that I did my cute little loop-de-loops, I'm gonna come down and do some structure and come back around and then scarf it. So I don't even know, I'm not planning it. I'm just kind of letting my eyes decide where I wanna put this. And I think I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna wrap around so that will give me some strength because now that's locked in right there. And then I'm gonna come back this way. So this is also adding a three-dimensional sense to it because it's not just flat now. It, that loop is giving it a little bit of a 3D feel. And then I'm gonna come around here like that. That's super cute, but it's extra long. It doesn't have any width. I wanna give it a little more width. So I'm gonna come around this like this. I also want to give it kind of a teardrop shape. I like teardrops or marquees. Marquees are kind of like start skinny, come out fat, and then get skinny again, kind of like a leaf shape. So I always have that in mind in the back of my head that I want the pendant to kind of have a kind of a balance of thickness and thinness. So I'm going to come back like this. And that, I like that. I like, I like how everything is dancing around it. Let's see, I want that curve to be a little more curvy. I think that's good like that. I'm going to come back and bend that right there. Now that's good, but this needs a little more reinforcing. So I'm gonna come around, start to scarf this, but I'm not gonna end it as I thought I was. So I'm gonna come back and you know what? I'm gonna do some little squigglies around this to try to strengthen it. Let's see if it'll work. So we're gonna go through here. I'm gonna roll it carefully a little bit at a time. So just rolling and turning into a corkscrew, but I'm gonna pull that out. I'm not ready to corkscrew it. I wanna pull it, keep rolling it rolling it and it's funny because a lot of my structures start ending up looking like some a woman like with a face and then some curves here and then some bigger curves down here so just must be like a subconscious thing that like that appeals to me as a beautiful shape and we're gonna come so now I'm starting my corkscrew coming around to strengthen that one wide part that was just kind of out in the atmosphere hanging out by itself so this corkscrew is hopefully gonna give it some strength. How tight do I make the corkscrew? You can make it so tight it's pressed up against it. I'm gonna have it kind of floating a little bit. So coming through, this is a little tricky. You just gotta kind of move with the wire, let the wire tell you how to move. If the wire is fighting you, you're doing it wrong. The one, the one thing you gotta learn about wire is if it feels smooth, you're doing it right. If it feels like you're fighting the wire, you probably want to back up and grab it somewhere else or figure out another way to approach it. And, you know, sometimes you're going to have to fight the wire to just get it finished. But the more you do it, the more you'll learn, just like spending a lot of time with an animal that you're not familiar with or a person you're not familiar with, the longer you spend with them, the more you get a feel for how to work with them in a way that's natural and smooth. That's starting to look kind of fun, right? So I'm also thinking in the back of my head, do I have too many lumps back here? Because I want this to lay flat when I'm done. This back is going to be against somebody's chest if it is a pendant. So I'm keeping that in mind. There are some lumps here. I can flatten them out sometimes. But if they're not terrible lumps, sometimes it's okay. So, And then what do I do here? I was going to come up and scarf the top loop, but I barely have enough wire to get back up there. So I'm gonna take this last part here and I'm gonna make it a last final spiral and then decide where to place it. So grab it right like this, really tight. You wanna grab tight. When you grab loose, it slips. It's like, a, it's like part of life. If you're, uh, if you're firm with a child, then you can, not, not, not cruel, but firm. If you're firm with a child, then you can sculpt a child to be a beautiful person. If you're too loose with a child, not reinforcing the rules or discipline, then the child will slip and they will get scratched, just like this wire gets scratched. Well, well, how they get scratched? Well, they will, they will get scratched by life because they won't be as strong. But if you are firm, firm but careful with a child, they will be strong and beautiful. So here goes my spiral. I'm pressing really tight so I don't slip. If I do slip, it's gonna scratch it. 
as I just explained. So here we go. There that cord, that's in. I just want to wrap it one more time. It's it's still a little sticking out a little loose and it could get snagged. So this last wrap is going to lock it. I mean this last fold. I folded it over like that. And that adds It's not not what I'm used to. I have a big loop, a smaller loop and a smaller loop. But I like that. I like that dynamic. So and I still have the kind of it gets thin, it gets thicker and then it comes thin again. So a little bit of a marquee shape, a little bit of a teardrop. As you can see here, the shape is kind of like this. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a skinny teardrop. So the, like I said, my two favorite shapes are a teardrop or a marquee. And this is kind of in between. It's a little of both. So I like how that came out. It's a little it's a little bit skinnier at the top. And it's a little it comes a little bit into a point at the bottom. So this is kind of a teardrop, kind of a marquee. I like that. And what do we do now? Well you can do a lot of fun stuff with this. You can have it as is. Um, you can turn this one quarter turn and put a loop, uh, put a cord or a chain through it. Or you, if you want to keep that facing you, you can put a jump ring and then put a cord through. You don't want to put a cord through just like this because if you put a cord through just like this, it'll turn like that and then you won't see all the pretty designs. When it's sitting on someone's neck, it'll kind of flip back and forth. So, but the good thing is this is the front And if it does flip in the back, the back looks pretty cool too. It looks almost as good as the front, right? So if, it, if someone puts it on upside down or it flips by accident, it's not the end of the world. And you want to check it, make sure, does it have any parts that are going to pull out? That right there. Whoa. See, look at that. I didn't know about that. That is very loose. I don't like that. But what do I do? The piece is all set. Um, and this is very loose right here. Well... All I need to do is take the tiniest bit of wire and secure right here that little joint right there. And see see how that moves? If I secure it, if I put the wire right around those two pieces, tiniest little bit of wire, it'll secure it. Or if I decide I want to add beads, maybe a bead here, maybe a bead there, I can thread with very thin wire the beads, thread it around, and that will lock everything in place. But you guys enjoy and make some little wire sculptures yourself. They're really fun. And if you make two of them the same relative shape and relative size, they could be earrings without being exactly the same. People, I don't find it fun to make earrings when they have to be exact identicals, especially if they have to be completely mirror image. Drives me crazy. I'd rather do mismatch earrings. We're the same size, roughly the same shape, kind of the same style, but each one is its own character. Kind of like a, you know, like a, a couple, like a man and a wife, or a, you know, boy and a girl, um, two friends. They're similar, but they're not exactly the same. Enjoy making your wire sculptures today.